Hello, my name is Tony Cole and I'm a speech writer and speaker coach and with the American presidential election fresh in our minds, I thought I would take a look at President Obama's acceptance speech, which has got a number of lessons that we can all learn to improve speech writing and um, speech delivery. The delivery is superb. You can look at it on, on YouTube, the way the man performs. He's very, very good at this. He's very charismatic. But the speech writer also deserves a credit. John Favreau, his director of speech writing, is a seriously good writer. Uh, let me just uh, give you some examples. This is how the speech starts. I can't promise to do it as well as uh, President Obama does. Tonight, more than 200 years after a former colony won the right to determine its own destiny, the task of perfecting our union moves forward. Now what you've got there is a classic rule of three. You've got tonight, uh, present, 200 years after, past, our union moves forwards, future. You've got a classic group of three, past, present, future. If you can get groups of three into your speeches and your presentations, they will be memorable. And if it's done well, I mean, you can do it in a corny way, but um, if, you do it, uh, if you do it right, it will be very memorable. It, would stick, it will stick in the minds of the audience. And this is, there, there are groups of three um, throughout this presentation. Uh, a, gr a group of three is said to stick in your head psychologically. There's something about it. Um, it's the structure of a joke, for example. Most jokes start off with um, a premise and then something happens in the joke. You know, a second guy walks into a bar or whatever. And um, so you think, right, OK, this is a pattern. So the same thing's happened twice. And then the third time it happens, there's a twist, which produces a surprise, which creates a laugh. Um, and so there are, there are all kinds of examples of groups of three and the way they, uh, they are psychologically um, sticking. Um, and there are loads and loads of groups of three in this speech, um, coupled sometimes with lists, because he uses lists in the same way that Martin Luther King used to use lists to build towards a conclusion. Um, in, it, there's a sort of hypnotic effect. Uh, you'll hear the determination in the voice of a young field organiser. You'll hear the deep patriotism in the voice of a military spouse. Um, that's why we do this. That's what politics can be. That's why elections matter. You've got groups of three all the way through. It's not small, it's big. Very simple, just a contrast, a twist. Contrasts and twists are very effective in speaking. Here's, uh, here's another group of three. We believe in a generous America, a compassionate America, a tolerant America. Um, stories that paint pictures in people's minds is another very effective technique that should always be in a speech. Speeches are about human connection, so you want what you say to paint a picture in the audience's mind. We, we, all, we remember best through pictures, most of us do anyway, so if you can paint a picture in the audience's mind, um, they will be stirred by your speech. Um, when President Obama describes the United States of America, he doesn't do it by telling us about a map. He tells us about lots of little stories, lots of individuals that build to paint a picture, uh, which is exactly the way to do it. The immigrant's daughter who studies in our school and pledges to our flag. The furniture worker's child in, South Ca in North Carolina who wants to become a doctor. The young boy on the south side of Chicago who sees a life beyond the, uh, beyond the street corner. There's loads and loads and loads of them in the speech and very, very well done. Beautiful writing. Um, then there's, there's contrast. I've done one contrast. This is another one which is really good. This country has more wealth than any nation, but that's not what makes us rich. Okay, slightly intriguing. What does he mean by that? We have the most powerful military in history, but that's not what makes us strong. Um, okay, our university, our culture are all the envy of the world, but that's not what keeps the world coming to our shores. So you've got another rule of three, another group of three. Um, you've also got um, contrasting twists, which keep you, uh, uh, keep you intrigued. Uh, more stories. I've seen it in the family business whose owners would rather cut back their own pay than lay off their neighbours. The workers who would rather cut back their hours than see a friend lose a job, um, etc. I won't go through them all because there are loads and loads of them, but it's very interesting to study. If, if you're interested in speech writing or if you ever have to deliver speeches and presentations, you can learn a lot from this.
And I'm going to end with the last sentence, which is deceptively simple. The last three sentences, I should say. And it's, thank you, America. God bless you. God bless these United States. And uh, that's a rule of three. So remember the group of three. You know, it's, uh, it, it's really important. You, thank you, America. God bless you. So you've got a rule of three in the three sentences. You've got you in number one and number two. You've got God bless in number two and number three. And you've got America in number one, the United States in number three. So how many patterns have you got there? You've got about four or five patterns there. And it adds up. You might take it in. You might think, yes, that's nice, but I can't analyse why it's nice. If you uh, take on board some of these techniques, um, you can improve your speech writing immeasurably. You possibly won't ever be as good as John Favreau because he's quite special. Um, but speech writers can use these techniques for you if you let them and they can be very, very powerful and very, very effective. Thanks very much.